uh, public comment. Uh, opening the floor to the general public. Hearing, seeing none. No letters in your back pocket, Chris? Not today, no, sorry. Okay, not a problem. Um, we'll move right on then. Um, approval of minutes, we've got a double here. We've got a regular meeting uh, from t August 23rd. And then the special meeting, we feels like we just, just had, but um, about a month ago. So um, let us take a look at the August meeting. It is, I believe, the second document after the agenda in your board packet. Yeah. Uh, we've got Dave, myself, CJ, Chris, uh, Jin, Zach, Rachel, Chad, and Carlos present. So if people could just take a minute and um, see if they find any um, errors, substantial or grammatical. Just keep tabs on them. We'll collect our thoughts and, and see if this is uh, ready enough to go or need some serious surgery. Why are some in gray and some in white? Google does in terms of who's present? I think that um, I just checked that myself. If you're looking at it in a, a Adobe Reader or something, and I was curious about that, in, uh, the names, and I clicked I clicked them, and I think they're the people who are in your address book. Because yeah, when I clicked the person's way. name, it opened up and tried to email you people. Okay. Yeah, I, sometimes I try to get rid of that. I know I've noticed Google does that. If you type someone's name and you've got them in the contact thing, they'll it creates a contact card for them. Oh yeah, just launched email. Son of a gun. <laughs> All right. Um, any any commentary on August or motions or amendments or fixes? I move to accept the minutes as written. I, I, heard, I heard Sue on that. I seconded. And that was Dave on the uh, seconding? Nope. Now that it's available for discussion, um, I continue to, well, I think I'd suggest that our somewhat, uh, our discussion that all points of view are welcomed, conservative, liberal, and everything in between. Did that get captured? I'm looking for it and I don't see it. Um, there was something that jogged my memory to that. Um, CJ, so I guess if I do believe when uh, staff shared the pride sponsorship, are you suggesting a, a, a more robust statement be made there? Uh, it is certainly captured yeah, the, the board at several points. Low, but if you want to put us, if you want to give us a capturing sentence there, there was no decision made, so it wasn't a vote. But, um, Correct. Balls in yep. your court. It was a discussion. Balls in your court. Yep. I would. Um, I would. You know, there's everything. There's more in here on a 12-page uh, uh, statement, and I apologize for the background noise. But there's more in here in this 12-page um, uh, 
set of minutes than simply motions. And so my reason is that as a part of a conservative as well as a liberal, a mixed community, I think that um, given that Orcas, I would recommend that we include the fact that we did discuss our friendliness uh, of all different points of view, because I think it, it will support our mission to be a voice for all of Vermont. CJ, I'm asking you to, to give me a statement that we could we could add to move this along. We really can't rehab the discussion. We're just approving the minutes. So if you can capture something you'd like and that people can uh, abide by, that would be good. How about uh, the board discussed Orca's mission to be a voice for all, uh, all Vermont, uh, what do you call, all Vermont citizens or all Vermont residents. Uh, and I think we could even just say that, discussed its mission to be a voice for all Vermont's residents and its commitment to welcome all different points of view. Uh, did I'm so I'm taking I'm taking minutes for this meeting and I'm also chairing. Did any staff or anyone get that written down? I think I can put something like that into the chat window if that would help. Oh, that, yeah, that'd be great. Mike, can I ask a question about it? Yeah, we're yeah, of course. Well, it's under the public comments part that we are we're discussing this. <clears throat> And so I want to know, are we saying that any public person that comes and wants to be part of our public comments can say whatever they want? I'm aware of how hard that was at the select board in Montpelier because half the community felt that someone had a chance to speak and other felt that the person was being squelched by the chairperson. And it was all during the public comments. So I want to know if we settled it as an organization at this point. Um, like the statement that we just heard from CJ. So we're we're actually not discussing what is uh, fair play in public comment right now. We're just approving the August minutes. CJ had issue with a lack of capturing of a conversation. She's putting uh, verbiage in the chat. Is that correct, CJ? To capture that, you are that is uh, correct, Dave. You are definitely like on topic, but it's a different issue. Um, hey, fine, we, just, we, we move have. beyond public comment. We're in the August minutes approval, and um, uh, CJ took issue with the lack of capturing of a certain conversation. Okay, uh, so I I said great, CJ. How about you give us some language to capture to your satisfaction? And we'll see if the rest of the board feels comfortable with it. But this approval of minutes is usually pro forma. If we really want to get into the, the depth of uh, how everybody's welcome, that may be old or new business. But um, let's see if we've got some language that's satisfactory. Um, yeah, floor's still open on the August minutes for approval. Uh, Carlos, welcome. I got you. I just, I just did the agenda. I'm, I'm keeping track of minutes. And uh, I trust you have the board packet. We're looking at the August. CJ, you're proposing this go after the um, uh, statement about the pride sponsorship. I don't know if you're muted or what. Sorry about that, Mike. Uh, if I if I switch over to unmute, I lose my part in the chat window. Um, my first one I think was malformed and that it implied that the board was welcoming all points of view. The second one makes it clear that it's Orca's desire. It's Orca's mission to represent uh, all points of view and, and Orca's desire to represent uh, all parts of Vermont. 
feel free to modify, but I think I think that captures I, the discussion. I, I am I'm interested. Are you are you proposing the are you making a motion to approve the, the minutes with the addition of this language? Well, if I understand it, the motion was made and seconded to approve, which opens it for discussion. And I'm suggesting that we, uh, given that the minutes capture some things, they're, they're more than just what was motioned and what was approved, which is the minimum. So I'm suggesting that it would probably be supportive of Morka's mission to include the discussion we had, because most of the things that were actually done that appear in the minutes might be perceived to be more uh, from one set of voices than another. All right, I don't I don't necessarily have to agree with that to welcome your language. But I, I'm curious about continuing the discussion or calling the question. I'm happy to call the question if the board is comfortable with the uh, with the suggested wording and I'm also very comfortable with the board modifying the suggested wording I just put it out there quickly. Thanks for clarifying um, any board members have any uh, discussion of CJ's added language. I think it's okay. It just says the last line says all Vermont perspective. So it should it? say all Vermont perspectives. Get the S there. Okay. Is someone on staff grabbing this from the chat and adding it to the minutes that will go on the website? If it's approved. Yeah, we can do that. Generate. Yeah. 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 Jen's doing that now. Thank you. Um, further discussion, or I'll call the question to approve the August minutes. All right. Um, all those in favor of uh, accepting the August, what is it, 23rd? Yes. Minutes of 2022 yeah. with uh, CJ's added language. Please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed would be a nay. All right, thank you. That passes unanimously. Um, now I got to do a little work on the minutes to capture. Uh, while everyone enjoys the uh, September minutes, I am just going to memorialize what just happened um, and then catch up with you guys. So see what's going on the September minutes for you. Recording in progress. Um, so I took these September minutes and they're a little choppy, but I was there so I can follow them, but I don't know if you weren't there how followable they are. Uh, it does capture the decisions, which is key for minutes. Again, the full discussions are online. I did send them out to you all. Um, so let me, let me know how you're thinking. Mike, I appreciate all you do to keep these meetings as organized as you do. Um, on the special meeting minutes, and I apologize, I was down with a guy with a World War II victory medal. 
and that was why I, I, he he just been picked up off his floor. Uh, so I apologize for my lack of previous notice. But on the minutes, um, thank you for taking them. The top of page two, there's a paragraph there, and I was unable to really interpret it. Is it possible to sort of expand that one a little bit? I think I got the rest. Is that about the subordination agreement? That's correct. It's those first five or six lines in the top of page two. Yeah, this was trying to capture some discussion of uh, board members were asking um, staff about just, I think Dave was floating the kind of, hey, what if someone just calls and asks for the director? What do you say? And um, they, the staff shared that, you know, some things would show up in the planning conversation on a Wednesday uh versus operations which is much more nuts and bolts on a monday um the subordination agreement does staff want to speak on that i don't want to rehab that meeting but um yeah i mean i could just quickly say what that was that was just um relating to the buildings being refinanced i believe is the term uh so the bcfa cfo uh needed us to sign as tenants um so that when they refinance their buildings and you know reach out to potential buyers they have an agree you know they have the understanding with their tenants so our lawyer looked at it everything looked fine we made very few changes and we signed it That answer any question? Okay. Yeah, I think that'll do it. Are you looking for a motion to approve the minutes? There's um John that same page just below the section we were just talking about. There's uh Dave moves to authorize co-directors and there's a typo in directors yep you should only be one right right good catch um beyond that uh yeah rachel if you are are interested in throwing a motion on the floor to approve the minutes with that type of correct Okay, that was Rachel moving. Thank you. No second that. Was that Chad? That was. Thank you. And uh, uh, do you think it would be reasonable and to clarify that one section, or if, if I'm the only one that had trouble with it, then I withdraw my request. Um, do you now understand like what, what the phrases refer to? You're just muted. You're muted, CJ. Thank you, Chad. Uh, yeah, my main concern is that the minutes should be a public record. And if, you know, are, do we feel the public's going to read and understand these? given that this is about a significant leadership model change. You know, again, I apologize. I was chairing and taking the minutes. So um, would you like me to, what would you like me to do, CJ? Would you like me to put paragraph breaks in there so each phrase is more clearly? Um, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm not sure what to do to satisfy your concern. So a suggestion would be great. You know what, if I'm the only one that has it, then I'm going to defer to the board. Um, so I'm looking forward to um, the, the, the uh, secretarial duties getting clarified this evening. Um, I've had a, a, this is two in a row where I'm, I'm sharing and taking the minutes, CJ. And um, I, I appreciate you acknowledging that, you know, wearing a couple hats. Yeah. And it's six, it's, it's, it's almost seven and we haven't gotten through approval of the minutes and my son's downstairs. So I'm just, I'm, 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 
I'm going to, I'm going to try to move the ball downfield, but if, if, um, okay, I withdraw my clarification request. Okay. Um, I, I think maybe paragraph breaks would fix it, but I'm, because I was there, I have a good under, you know, I just, I, I, I typed it. So I like feel comfortable about how those phrases, what they mean. Um, so I can't like get in someone else's head that get the, get a sense of how the fix would work. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So the friendly amendment is, um, we have moved to approve the minutes of the special meeting on uh, 927 with the spelling correction and the paragraph breaks that Mike will be inserting later. Chairman, Mike will be inserting later. Um, so you do want those paragraph breaks. Let me, let me memorialize that. I do have um, Rachel already moving and Chad seconding. Is there further discussion? All right, I'll call the question if, uh, if it's timely. Um, all those in favor of uh, approving the September 27th minutes of 2022, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed. Okay, that's unanimous approval. All right, am I gonna get out of the hot seat here with the financial reports, who's up? Oh, so I guess it's me in terms of, I put the financial reports in the, the director's report of just the amounts. I did not actually um, make copies of the Ed Jones. So I do need to, if anyone is interested in what the Ed Jones has said or the statements say, otherwise I think um, it is in the co-director's report during under the finances. And there's also, I think um, the financial reports, there's a new budget or I'm sorry, a new budget versus actuals report that I think in the previous minutes there was, um, I think CJ had asked for an extra column to be added for expected expenses. Um, so I did make a additional, a, new report that had it kind of broken out. So I was going to save it for the director's co-director's report to go over the budget, but I can um, go over the financials, the old version, which is just the budget, budget versus actuals um, for the year, which is at the end of your board packets. That's actually near the end. So it's right after the co-director's report. And then also, if there were any questions about the new budget report, I can go over that. But it's mainly that um, it is adding an additional, it's not quite a column because it's a whole row of projected actual versus the budget and the over and percentage. And that's just for the months coming up so that we can kind of see if we put in like the expected expenses for the next few months where we might theoretically be at the end of the year. So I think um, I added like our expected like salary amounts and um, some of the health benefit expenses that are pretty regular. And so hopefully those will show a little bit more of where we expect to be at the end of the year versus the current budget um, versus actuals report that doesn't include any of those expected expenses that are pretty, um, pretty regular in the months. So I think um, if there's, and I did highlight in the new budget report, I highlighted some things that it's primarily that the total were over budget. And some of those will be fixed in terms of, um, in the next budget cycle, I think for 2023, the unemployment taxes, I think were budgeted pretty low. And I would say that would be something to fix in the next year of how that budgeted amount gets calculated. Um, the other bit is the mileage is also over budget and I think that's also, when I looked at the original budget, 
to the amount. It was pretty low. So I think, especially with the mileage rates did go up in July. And I, I think we're trying to be, we're going out to more events. So with that, by covering more events, there's gonna be more mileage. So I'm hoping to have in the new budget, a better number for mileage that might be um, a little bit more on target. And I think outside of that, um, the workers comp is also another one where I think the budgeted amount was pretty low and it may not necessarily take in when we do the workers comp audit and the new rate comes out, I think um, we can, it's, it seems like in looking at the previous years, that amount is pretty similar. So I'm gonna put that in the new budget. So hopefully those will be fixed in the new budget cycle. So a lot of, most of the pinks or the highlighted amounts are um, not unexpected or in terms of like what real life shows, but it's not maybe shown very accurately in the budget to the amount. So I don't think that there were any things that were expensive expenses that we weren't expecting. Um, so outside of that, I think, um, like I think other than that, I mean, um, I guess if there's any questions about any of the amounts or even like the new reporting, and I guess not to, but CJ, I think you had requested that additional column. So I'm hoping that I was able to address what you were looking for when looking for that column. Much appreciated, Jen. Jen, could you direct us to the column you're talking about? I'm oh, so it would be in the new, um, it's in the new report. So if you go past the, budget versus actuals report. There is a spreadsheet that has some gray columns. And so that would be this report. And I can, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the new budget report that where we're looking at a projected column and that's the, the white section of from October to December, based on our regular expenses, what we're looking to expect. And that new, the total column, the total year to date would have those expected expenses put into play. So then it gives a little bit more accurate number toward the end of the year, how close would, would we be to the budget amount? So, And then um, just to finish up the very last page of the board packet, which is, it's the same report, but expanded if you wanted, if you were interested in looking at what October and November and December was what those expenses were actually, there's a sheet that has it, but primarily I would imagine you would just want that first summary page that has all the totals, but just in case anyone was wondering. That's good. Would it be appropriate at this time to raise a question about the meaning of a particular budget item? That would be well within the financial report, certainly. Thank you. Jen, what is covered by business insurance? So I believe that there's a alliance. Um, so it's been a 
it's the business alliance member services and that's what he's coded as business insurance and it's i think it's not the workers comp so i'm assuming that um i haven't actually looked at that particular policy it just was a bill that came through when i looked and it had been always coded as business insurance so i may need to look at exactly what does that cover in terms of the the pieces and um I can get you that information after the meeting, maybe. Is that okay to relay that information to you about what the alliance? Absolutely, is? yeah. Okay. A copy, you may, in fact, you may, it may not be a terrible idea to distribute the business insurance policy to the board. Okay. Mainly because it's a major um, area of risk management and risk reduction that every corporation is, is supposed to do and every board is supposed to be on top of. Okay, I will um, I will send out the the insurance and what we have, and I will also put it on the Google Drive so that if anyone wants to look at it at a different time, they could just go to the Google Drive as well. Thank you. Uh, further questions or discussion from the financials? Mike, I think, uh, <clears throat> that for us to do a meeting and have to try to look at these little numbers, figure out what they mean, what the labels that go with them are, would be a separate meeting for me. I might need to have an advisor sitting at my elbow. Uh, is, do we have access to someone like a Mike or somebody who can take each of the board minutes and look at the financials and see if it all makes sense? and put a couple of question marks on there for, for discussion. Because I, I just can't, I can't do this, except waste a lot of time trying to figure out what I'm looking at. I agree with that. That was, that was Sue as well. Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 trying to get uh wrap my head around the new structure on the um on the present presentation of some of these numbers and yeah i'm looking at really tiny font as well is the request also to provide i'm trying to understand the question is it is the request to make, make it bigger fun and also to provide a description of what the different line items mean or what's the tra translate for me i'm in kindergarten <laughs> well i was asking that someone who knows this business and knows what we do financially and have done financially gets a chance to scan whatever we're looking at at the board meeting and say if there's something that uh, needs to be clarified for us or something that seems to make not quite as much sense as it should to bring that up as a separate discussion item rather than have us look and see if there's anything in here we either don't understand or disagree with it's way beyond me trying to understand this. Right, David, as, as you, you may know, um, we, you know, it did, it started with gin and we did not have a treasurer's report. Um, and that is, you know, been, been a tricky issue with um, uh, Mike Doyle hoping to step down and, and telegraphing his move for years and just um, the heir apparent not, not being available. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think you're right. That creates a gap in understanding for the rest of the board. And I'm not I don't have a solution for you this evening, but thank you for uh, bringing that up. Well, had you talked about contacting Rachel Feldman um, to see whether she wanted to keep being the point person? you know, the board's point person for financials. Um, yeah, Jen can speak to the, the multiple times there. And um, 
Uh, Mark Gwynn actually at Edward Jones has, has reported out that he's, he's been trying for a year. Um, so I- Trying for a year for what? Um, to get a response from Rachel concerning the, um, the mm -hmm. treasurer's role. And that's Feldman, not you, sorry. Um, aren't these charts in, they're in digital form? So you're not really supposed to look at them like this. You're not? No. Okay. I, mean, I think you can zoom in and search and stuff. Oh. I mean, this is just to have it as a presentable packet, but to actually analyze it. Oh. I don't think we can. Yeah. So I do, I sent it out on Friday night and I can, I can adjust that timeline if you, if, if it's helpful to get the reports earlier than, you know, over like a few days. So if that makes it a little bit easier to have time to look through it, I'm happy to try to adjust that time scale to be able to send that packet out. I think that this, the time scale is fine and, and uh, I didn't see anything that jumped out at me. I do think the bigger gap is the, the lack of a active treasurer. So that's yeah. that's clearly the issue, not the, and I and I have total faith in, in Jin and the other staff to raise our attention to anything going on in the budget that is uh, outside of the ordinary. Um, so. Well, should we, um, try to uh, make a motion to accept the financials as presented and then have a separate item of trying to figure out what to do about getting a treasurer? Um, definitely um, election of officers is on the agenda this evening. And um, Sue, if, if you wanna turn that into a motion, we can see if that, there is a second. But there's, if there's further discussion about it, um, I guess I would make the motion first and then there can be a discussion. Exactly. So, yeah, exactly. I mean, um, so uh, moves to accept the financials. I second. And Rachel seconds. Thank you. All right, um, further discussion? Are there any things that uh, you are surprised at or any disappointments or any things that are late or overdue? No, um, everything is going along. I think um, some of the things like the mileage, I think no, we were expecting- The mileage was super low, I don't know why. Like I would have had four times as high. In the budgeted amount. Yeah. So I think that um, some of it just is like, you know, it's, I think, waiting for the next budget so that we can make these adjustments so they're a little bit more ac accurate. Because, yeah, I think, and, and it's part of, like, if we're expecting, if we're trying to go out to cover more events, then mileage is going to go up. So I think um, having that reflect. So I guess, you know, in a good way, it's good that we're spending a lot of mileage that we're going out yeah. to places. I think it may have been a holdover from a lockdown budget where there was no one to go in anywhere and there were no miles. Um, mm. That 2020, early 21 time. Um, this is a budget that Rob built, correct? The, the sort of predictive in January. Yes. Yeah, so he may have just been looking at COVID times. Idle speculation. Other thoughts or questions? And if it's quiet, I can call the question. Um, all right. It does remain quiet. So all those in favor of accepting the financial reports, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed would be a nay. And that's unanimous. Thank you all.
Um, does this bring us to Chris on the face of the co-directors, or is this a shared duty? Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and present the co-directors report, as you see in your packet. Or just uh, give you an overview here. Okay, we did it a little bit different this month. I'll try to give you a little bit less reading. Um, it's, it's built in bullet points. Um, there's still a lot, a, a lot that has been going on, and so um, this this does not capture at all. But so bear with us, and we'll just kind of touch on the highlights. And um, feel free to stop me if you have any questions. So. Um, looking at our production, um, we, the kind of the big item this last um, month was the um, live general election uh, candidate forums that we presented uh, in collaboration with the bridge. So um, we coordinated, did kind of all the pre-production in collaboration with the bridge and then also work together um, to uh, do the production. So um, Orca Media kind of ran the production element and the bridge kind of ran the journalistic element and brought in moderators. And so you can see that was um, what we believe was the first time we'd ever did a live from the studio, at least at this location, um, to the channel. Um, production and you can see coverage of two races outside of our service area, the Bershare and Brookfield, um, which the bridge and, and, and we, we worked together with the bridge to kind of determine what uh, audience, right, would be tuning into these candidate forums. Our focus was local elections. Um, and I think we did 11 total. Central Vermont, Central Vermont yeah. elections. Did the candidates seem satisfied? Oh yeah, that? they had a ball, and Richard. everyone. Um, I would say everyone was very grateful and and did a lot of like on air thanking of Orca Media and was you know some of them were didn't have an opportunity to do to do any general election forum, some of the smaller house races. Um, so that was great to bring them in and to also. Yeah, I'd say that it was all really a success. There wasn't any major problems, and we had yeah everything flowed really nicely. And, and we, are we, we the really only good. are we the only record of what they said in answer to the hard questions? Uh, perhaps I'm, I think some of them participated in primary candidate forums. Okay. Uh, I just wondered the, whether they were comfortable knowing that as the election approaches. Yeah, that we've got answers to tough questions. Yeah, um, in our archives. Right, right. Yeah, I think I think that they they are aware of that. Okay. And yeah, and I think that that also I my understanding was that they were enthusiastic to speak in front of a live audience, both in, on the channel and on YouTube, mm -hmm. um, and then to share it after the fact. So all of those are now. I'll say that uh, all of those are now available online so we'll continue to promote those and then they're all categorized under the series on our website and um on our youtube page so move on to our production uh so we did a live press conference from the governor's ceremonial office so that was a first as well um senator patrick Leahy at the vermont technical college women's economic opportunity conference that was an all-day event coverage, uh, not live, but all day of coverage and available um, now, I believe. Um, we worked with um, Norwich University, the Military Writers Symposium, which is an annual event, but I believe slightly different this year. It was a two day mm -hmm. event, so a little bit expanded and that was a two day live stream. Um, so some of the big writers didn't show up at Norwich. Military writers, so it's very, it's a niche. I understand. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I would say it's a specific group. Um, okay. Yeah, so definitely uh, hearing from that perspective, which is, you know, um, that's great. So uh, wrapping up production on a video project, mini documentary. So this is something that uh, we've been working on for a, a while now, and have mentioned before in previous reports. But uh, Hunger Mountain Co-op asked solicited us to do some kind of 50th uh, anniversary video that they can screen at their annual meeting and have a big anniversary party. So 
um, we've we've been working on that, and we're gonna, um, which is gonna look something like interviews, B-roll, music, something that is kind of tightly put together. Chad might be aware of like a the package. PBS calls it the package video package. Um, so something like that in that realm, um, and that'll be available soon, which is an exciting kind of thing that we're hoping to replicate into the future to work with other nonprofits to create something like that. Um, Christopher, yes, I'm, I'm just curious with this with um, with that. How is that like commissioned? And um, is this someone? Do they hire or get to do that? Right. So this is since this is a first and a bit of an experiment. This was an in kind uh, opportunity that or an in kind uh, project that we be you know having coming out of the summer and having uh, Conger Mountain been being so generous to us in our summer programs mm -hmm. and recently some of their contributions to us. We kind of in the conversations uh, let them know that you know they're welcome to contribute, but. We were going to do this as a bit of an experiment and a learning opportunity for us to see how we could replicate this and maybe do some kind of fee for service in the future for other nonprofits. Um, okay. So, and chat. Uh, sorry, Carlos had a question too. I think you're muted, or I just don't hear you. The pro who's producing and um, camera operators, who's editing the project, all that. The sure. So. Uh, Sean Temple is really taking the lead on it. Uh, one of our camera operators um, who's done a ton of uh, post-production and kind of one of like um, one of the ones that we mentioned uh, would be a great candidate for a full-time production assistant position. But anyway, so Sean and I began the production and we did some interviews and then Sean kind of took the lead and is also the one editing. Who owns the documentary? Orca Media. So does Hunger Mountain then get to carry a copy of it with them to to show off their wares uh, at other conventions or? Food oh, absolutely, processing? yeah, definitely. Okay. I think I just, it'll be, you know, it's a it's it's a very casual agreement. I think that it'll be branded with Orca Media, and they'll it'll probably be posted uh, to our YouTube page, and that's most likely the the. the content that they'll be sharing is from our it's community. not a conflict of interest if we want it to be presented at the green mountain film festival uh i don't think knowing the, the film festival and uh i don't think that this would be this is more of a commercial and okay. less of a all right uh, less just one film yeah but i mean we could submit it and see <laughs> and see what happens um yeah so uh I, you know they might ask for them to if they have a youtube page they might want to post it as well so any other questions? Sorry. Is that hey, CJ? Carlos, your Can your you microphone is a little. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Loud and clear. Back back in the day, the thing is that you know part of Orca's mission was to train people to do that work for themselves versus Orca. How so? Is is that a direction you're going in? To produce work for other people, right? To, I mean, if, if it's the direction, it's the direction. But usually, a projects like these um, train them and show them how to execute this, so they themselves. So right now, we're kind of a fine line between a which is for profit versus a. Not um. Carlos, your, your microphone is kind of cutting in and out, and I'm just going to try to sum up your question. And I think what you're asking is, um, is, is this something that, you know, going forward, are we interested in doing these kind of like paid productions and or are we interested in kind of continuing to train community members and nonprofit organizations to do video packages themselves? And so I'd say yes to both of those. I think that this is something that we just need to explore as like a revenue stream. You know, this is something that uh, CCTV in Burlington has done for years. Media Factory has done. Um, so I think that this is like definitely an option. However, I will say that uh, um, it does take a lot of labor time, right? Because it's different than gavel to gavel coverage. And, you know, I think that it's going to have to be for now a case by case basis. We should kind of develop some kind of uh, 
understanding of what nonprofits or organizations are asking of us. And if there is a fee for service, we should create some kind of system where like they definitely understand that overcharging 75 bucks an hour or something like that. I will also say that, you know, we do need to kind of build up our when community members are requesting coverage, like we we should definitely encourage and, and build that up more so uh, where we train uh, nonprofit organizations or community members to cover their own events. I think that's something that I've noticed, you know, that we've started to talk about three of us and it hasn't happened over the last two years and something that, you know, Channel 17 in Burlington has done really well. It, because it also, it takes a lot of labor time and our staff, every time we get an event coverage request, if we say yes, you know, and we don't even offer the option to them to come and get a camera and record their own event, you know, so there's a lot, I think that we need to think about there and, and both of those things, I think are kind of related, but also like directions we need to go in. Uh, does that answer your question? So yes, to both of those. <laughs> It does, I, I think hopefully you could hear me. And I think at least, you know, bridging the gap between, you know, for example, saying we'll cover this and then we'll bring the package here offloaded to computers and we'll train somebody on your end to edit the package. Sure. Yeah. That's kind of do that instead of, I'm, you know, I'm worried that if you do the whole work, it, is that mission that we go out and edit for other people and, and just, yeah, you're still kind of breaking up, but I, yeah, I do understand. I think that maybe we could have that conversation um, and maybe that's something that like we could uh, prioritize in that like out, outreach circle, right? So I think that that is something that we just need to figure out. Like I said, this is, uh, we're doing this because they kind of presented the opportunity and we said yes to it and, and to kind of see where it can lead us. And also it was kind of coming out of that uh, digital capacity grants that we applied for but didn't get. So it was kind of that idea that maybe there is this place for us to do some like more creative productions. But I totally hear you that like it's gonna it 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 you know we're not a production company and we're not necessarily trying to tap into that. I, it's just that maybe there's some kind of like in between world a pocket that we could fill. I was going to say to add to that, I think we, when we were looking at this workflow, we did have, and we talked to Sean about what are the, what steps are being involved, what, how reproducible, how sustainable is it, how can we trim, like, you know, so if we need to present it to someone else that they can be dropped into it. So we are using this opportunity to try to work plan it and workflow it so that we can make it something that can be easily translatable to someone who's maybe just learning or that these are the steps. So we're hoping with this that we're like, okay, well, you know, we lost a lot of time at this point. Is there something we could omit or is there something if we, if we view it in a different way? So I think we were approaching this with a, as a learning experience of how can we trim this and make it into a sustainable project that we can just say, oh, you know, pop this person in. This is, these are the steps you need to do, or this is like the rough, like, Template. Yes, yeah. we templated it. Yeah, and yeah. so that's where that's where also when we start to, if we can go to, out to the organization, they have staff to do it. We can be like, we've got this template. You just, you know, this is what we're looking at. This is how you approach it. And then you can probably create something pretty simple. And so I think that that's, it is definitely, we are looking at it to try to template it so that it could be the organization or it could be us, but it isn't, um, and so I think it's definitely a learning process and we are gathering data. <laughs> right. I mean, I would definitely, I would be curious to hear, you said that they do this at Town Meeting TV and, and uh, Media Factory. Um, might be worth talking to, to someone there and getting some details. You know, how do they do it? Is it a package? You know, usually if, if I was going to do a really low rate sort of thing like this, I would have like a package of, duration maximum number of interviewees um and then you know have like a, a deadline say that we we will make you something in two weeks you know and, and and that sort of drives how how much effort goes into it um but i would be curious how they do it and i, I definitely think that there's a market and and a need for this in the community and i think that some nonprofits here that they they would love to learn how to do this, but a lot of times the people who are the ones who are eager to learn are, are the people who are like their interns and they're moving on. And so then they need someone else trained on it in a few months or a year or two. Um, 
And maybe there's like a, a difference in level of something where it's like a project where someone takes a camera to, films their own thing. And then it's like, well, we'd like something a little bit nicer, um, but we don't want to drag out the, you know, production crew sort of nicer. Um, and the uh, revenue from something like this is something that could pay, you know, it, it is something that, you know, it's a little bit more for staff or a little bit more for um, some of these other things too. It's, it's, I would be curious to hear how it works in, in their system at Media Factory. And I think that your comment regarding one of the uh, things that had come up in the past <laughs> was that um, we were supposed to, Rob was supposed to create um, a promotional video about Orca. Yeah. And that never happened. Mm -hmm. But using this uh, format, maybe that can be project number two yeah, in, this, sure. in this lineup of you know, workflow. Great idea. Yeah, I agree. Dave? I'd like to say that because of the organization, namely the 50th anniversary for the Hunger Co-op, uh, I would hope we'd be, we'd be covering it anyway. You know, we've made a documentary, but I hope we'd also cover the actual meeting. Yes, the annual yeah. meeting is definite, and we've been okay, covering, good. I yes. just want to make sure we don't drop out. <laughs> you've already right, done right, the documentary. Right. No, we're doing both, yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm going to kind of move on from that, but I love that um, everyone is interested in, in this, and I think that we should definitely continue that conversation, and obviously it relates to strategic planning and and. I, th I think acknowledging Sue's spe specific um, idea that ORCA becomes sort of the test pattern on this template we're talking about yeah. uh, uh, makes a lot of sense. And did you say, I understand we didn't charge, but did you say in kind? Right. What was in the nature kind. of that in kind? Like, they gave us in kind. No, sorry, in kind meaning like this video is in kind ORCA to Hunter Mountain. Does that make sense? This is us donating this time and video to them. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, there wasn't an in-kind payment to us. No, I'm sorry. Our labor was an in-kind- Donation. Yeah. Donation to Hunger Mountain. Got it. Are you expecting them to reciprocate? Well, they did give us desserts yes. for the annual meeting. They, yeah. I think they gave a bunch of- um, They were the highest donor. Yeah, the, for the yeah. Make TV camp, so they all, they, they offered or they sponsored snacks mm -hmm. for the the summer camp and so I think um I was like was there so I think on that and like especially from the summer camp the, the kids went through a lot of food and so mm -hmm. <laughs> having them being donating some of that I think maybe sparked that oh you know you gave us a lot of donations for food so yeah. we're doing this and we cover their meeting annual meeting every year anyway so for them to be like you know, we want to do a little extra documentary bit. We're like, oh, that seems. And I will, do it. and I'll definitely add that, like, this is, uh, of course, like relationship building. And I feel like with the relationship that I've kind of built with, like, the as far as like local corporate sponsors, like Hunger Mountain will be there. And I feel like it's almost like a guaranteed ask for like anything going forward. And Sun Common and Hunger Mountain feel like, you know, they have, there's this relationship where they know us and they trust us and are supportive of the work that we're doing. And so I feel like this, this is a good test to do this and maybe you like, yeah, we, we assess how much we would charge for something like this in the future. And also, you know, I'm sure this relationship is not ending with this, right? So there's definitely having Hunger Mountain kind of like there for us feels, and, and feels good. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Um, Okay, so we did uh, send three camera operators to three different events at the Taste of Montpelier. So that was kind of an exciting uh, round, round of coverage. Um, we've also been covering uh, community forums related to housing and development projects in Montpelier, Randolph, and Waterbury, multiple housing uh, developments. So um, I think that would be a great thing to like focus on in the newsletter and you know when we uh, see themes like that. Um, so I'm going to move on to the uh, outreach and community partnerships. So we've also been in the 
the throes of our homeschoolers video jam, our first uh, ever homeschool program. So it's a homeschool uh, group that reached out to us, um, kind of coming out of that Make TV camp this summer. Some of the students uh, were homeschool, local homeschool students and families, and they asked, would you be interested in uh, creating a class that our kind of Montpelier Central Vermont uh, group of 10 homeschool families could kind of walk into. And so we created this class for them um, and they're in their sixth week, I'd say. And so they have yeah. three weeks left. They did six weeks. Yeah, so I think they're doing eight weeks total. Um, yeah, so then uh, of course you all know we had a, uh, and we'll share the video and um, keep you posted on that. So. Uh, we had a successful open house. So most of you were there, I think, and uh, very exciting um, announcement of the John Block Memorial Studio. I think that was really wonderful. We heard from from Dave, uh, heard from Michael, and like it was just it was yeah. I feel like that was a nice community um, uh, moment to, to gather around. And if we took a little bit of data. There's 25 people that signed up on our our sign in sheet. There we had one from Worcester, one from Hyde Park. One from Chelsea and 15 from Montpelier and seven unlisted locations. So got a little bit of data. Um, and Rachel, did you win a t-shirt? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we had the raffle. And so yeah, you gotta make sure to get your t-shirt if you haven't gotten it yet. Okay. Oh, you already got it. Okay, yeah, you're good. Okay, so um, I'll say, yeah, I'm doing an in-school residency right now uh, that's been, um, coming out of this multi-year or multi-semester relationship with Twinfield High School, um, working with their Renaissance program. Um, so, and they're, they're paying, uh, this, was, this was their kind of contribution. They're doing like a $75 an hour kind of consulting uh, contribution, which is great. Um, and I'm just uh, showing up every once in a while to a class called Economics on, of Poverty. And I'm bringing some cameras and helping them build a short documentary project. Um, so they're kind of incorporating filmmaking into this uh, class that they're doing. It's been really great. And um, there'll be more from that. We've been hosting the Zenith students uh, from U32 with our friendly chair, Michael Abadi. So uh, Michael has brought in, uh, his students in recently and they've been learning some studio production basics and we just did a little editing tutorial and so we hope to have them back continue that uh relationship with them um let's see so i've i'm meeting in two weeks with a group of i think it's quite a few now it's uh it's maybe six uh montpelier high school um teachers um who are all interested in bringing like um new uh, media arts production classes and, um, and, and teaching artists similar, similarly to what is happening at Twinfield, um, kind of in residencies, building up media arts programs that they don't currently have. Chad, I got your email and thank you. Uh, I've been away, so uh, which is totally related to that. And Chad mentioned that at the middle school. So there's interest in Montpelier, putting money into you know, buying cameras similar to what we did with the Orange Southwest school. So creating like a consulting package for them where we just help them, you know, they're interested in buying some cameras, building up something um, that they could incorporate uh, into their current programs. Yes. Did you set a number for I mean, as teacher might have 14 kids in their class. Right. Would they bring all 14 here? Uh, so in this case, this is all like us going to visit them or to just supporting in their kind of curriculum development or okay. helping them budget for a handful of cameras. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, the last thing on this was that we also participated in a panel discussion. I moderated a panel discussion that was part of the alternative media conference at Goddard um, and it was on youth media in Vermont. And we had a great turnout. Um, there was folks there from community media centers, students, uh, teachers from around the state. And we had uh, some of our uh, young people, Rowan, Taggart, and I think that was it from, from Orca. Um, 
Yeah, and then so there was this this great idea to start a like a listserv um, and a Vermont Youth Media Alliance where we can all just share information over like an email list. Is that the first time they've done a, an alternative media conference? Actually, so that that comes out of the '70s, and there's a long history of that. And also the first one I think was in the early '70s. That got there, and, mm -hmm. and then there was a, a kind of a anniversary one in the '90s, and so this is the first one since then. So you need a Roman numeral on it. Right. Yeah, I don't know which one this was. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Um, but we also so we also uh, recorded and we'll be broadcasting the other events that took place in the other discussions. Oh, okay. So I'm going to quickly share some more information, some more things happening. So um, as we mentioned before, we would be sharing some numbers on the summer and kind of uh, give you a little bit of data that we gathered. Uh, let me just join the Zoom. Any questions? Sorry, I was kind of trying to be efficient there and I moved quickly through that. If... Did you actually keep the names of the people that signed in for the annual meeting? The, yes, yeah. And one, our, that's one thing our intern did was put them into a spreadsheet and we can add them to our air table of contacts. Good. Good. Um, can you let me into the meeting, please? Oh, yes, I can. Sorry. Gee, in the old days, we just had a guest book. <laughs> now it's an air table. <laughs> okay, so like I said, um, I'm going to just share my screen and show. Oh, that's disabled share screen. Okay, here we go. So I will show you the uh, the numbers here first. Um, so this is what we did was uh, we ended up kind of looking at our QuickBooks and our PayPal stuff that we brought in and money that we spent, and we kind of looked at the Vermont Youth Documentary Lab and HTV together so it's easier to maybe understand. Um, so this summer, uh, the revenue that we took in from donations was $3,130. And donations were solely uh, um, participant, like enrollment contributions, right? So there, there was a sliding scale for, for all of our summer events. It was suggested zero to $350. To participate, and we got an average. I would say, two hundred dollars was probably the average. Um, so that's great, and that was the total there in sponsorships. Um, this was just for the Vermont Youth Documentary Lab. Um, this was four thousand three hundred fifty dollars. So I think next summer we'll also solicit sponsors for the Make TV Camp because you'll see here how much money we spent on food alone. So I think that is definitely what. Um, We'll need money for in the future. So that total seven thousand four hundred eighty dollars. And then looking at the expenses, um, the materials you see six thousand dollars. That was kind of the biggest one, and mostly having to do with this uh, second cinema camera kit that we bought. That was around four thousand dollars used uh, cinema camera, and we most likely won't be buying that next summer. So that was a little high. Food, you can see. We spent $1,462.97 on food. Um, these are our two $600 stipends for our, for our two fellows that were paid to participate in the Vermont Youth Documentary Lab. And so the expenses were $9,000. For those high school students? Yes, that was uh, Taggart, who now works for Orca Media, coming out of that, and, um, and Violet, who's off. I have, can I ask a question about the eight millimeter um, and development? Yeah. Um, so why did they decide to go with eight millimeter um, shooting? I suppose it would be my question. Uh, they didn't decide to go to that. It was just something that I refurbished the Super 8 camera and it was kind of like in addition to using the C100 and the C200, it was um, something that I made available and bought a handful of rolls of film and then they were really enthusiastic about it. So it was kind of like our 
auxiliary camera behind the scenes that they passed it around. And, and so if you, if you see the video, I ended up like incorporating some of that footage, what we all did it, incorporating some of the footage in the edit, um, the film footage. For next year, if you're ever gonna do this again, you should hit me up because I, I still have, I have a lot of super 16 millimeter stock, like a lot. Oh. I mean, we could, we could, you could test a roll and to see if it's still good. Yeah. It should be good, um, but I have a lot. You have a camera? And I do have the camera. I do simple. have camera. Oh, oh that'd I be great. Thanks, brother. Yeah, that would be super fun. I think that they really, they love that because I mean, the cinema cameras are already outside of anything they've used and then the Super 8 cameras are just like, it's wild for them to, to get their hands on some of those. Um, Is so VYDL a funding body? So that was the abbreviation for Vermont Youth Documentary. I know you told me that, but it's, what is that? Is that you? The Vermont Youth Documentary Lab? Yeah, that's just our project. Okay, that's our I thought you turned it into a funder, you know, at some point. Uh, no. Because nope. that's, that's why I saw the letters and you told me what it stood for. Oh, I'm right. Sure. I'm just abbreviating it so it's easier okay. to digest here. Um, so yeah, you, uh, we, we mentioned the total here. For Actually, maybe a related um, clarification, Chris. Are these are these numbers also in the regular budget that Jin presented earlier, like the seven four and the nine four, or are we off books here? Or are you just could you help us understand the relationship between what you're doing here and the financial reports? Sure. Yeah, everything should. Be in there, right, Jen? I mean, this is just uh, when we talked about kind of looking at the summer. Uh, this is just uh, kind of picking out the expenses and revenue that was that was specific to the summer programs. I just uh, we wanted to take a look at that and give some numbers around there. So, and I think if you look at the old financials that we're used to, the donations at six two. Those might be missing some of the PayPal because um, it went through the PayPal and it just needs to be added in. So that number might be, I think is missing a few of the donations that were the in the 3000 column. So it is pretty close, I think. Um, so that's where the donations numbers should match up. Right. I think so. Thank you. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> so there was a family emergency. Okay. Um, sorry about that. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to quickly also say the the, the number of participants. Um, so all together, we served 19 young people. Um, and the you can take a look at the Vermont Documentary Lab had eight this summer, two returning. Uh, those two returning from last summer were our uh, youth media um, artist fellows, the paid fellows. And then in the Make TV camp, we had 11 um, total, two returning, and those two returning uh, also from the Make TV camp were from the 2021 Vermont Youth Documentary. So in addition to this, I sent out feedback forms, and unfortunately, probably with school and all of that, the busyness of life, uh, we haven't heard back from anybody at this point, but um, we hope to hear back. So I was hoping to also include some uh, feedback forms um, just regarding, you know. Chris. Had, yeah. Um, something that I do and works for me is exit tickets at the end of the day or end of the week. So you get right. them there when, when they're fresh and just get them there. Yeah. So is the, there's a $2,000 deficit. So yeah, does that mean that uh, the, the overall it was a it was a negative $2,000? Yeah, so I mean, I think that the tricky thing is is that we've we've been like budgeting for, you know, spending our own money, right? So and I think that you know, going forward we'll have this all nicely very clear so Jin you know maybe you can speak to this but in the budget it, it says I forget the exact number you know from Rob's previous budget budgeting five thousand dollars say 
towards the summer programs, right? Mm -hmm. So that was like how much we were going to spend as Orca Media. So you can see here that we took in, you know, $7,400 and spent $9,400, but we budgeted $5,000. So it's, it's, I think, mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, did better than expected. Yeah, exactly. So I think yeah. you know, going forward, you know, understanding what our like looking at the patterns of uh, 2021 and 2022 summer, we might we might start to be like, oh, we're spending two thousand dollars on food. Mm -hmm. We're spending, you know, we're not always buying a camera. You know, maybe we're spending, you know, it's mostly food at this point. <laughs> like, yeah. So yeah. Um, expenses, like kind of the promotional stuff, the ads, the marketing has really added up to um yeah so i just quickly as part of that i was just gonna like show some of the photos oh i lost it <laughs> while you're looking for it did you actually ask for either the students themselves or their parents so I an evaluation of the entire event so it was i sent it to both um both the students the, basically, whoever uh, mm -hmm. online, whatever email address it has, most of them were parents. Um, so this was just like a few kind of behind the scenes pictures from the Vermont Documentary Lab. Um, you can see here's that super eight millimeter going off to negative land in New York, it was called. Um, here's kind of like behind the scenes at the uh, Montpelier Food Pantry where we did a couple of interviews. Um, here's all the gear that we lugged up and down the hill. Um, yeah, and here's an interview with um, the Reverend at the Unitarian Joan. Church. Um, Joan Javier Javier. Yeah, you know, here's some kind of like on the street interviews that we did. These were these went over really well. This was great. Um, yeah, and then here's our, this is, this one's fun. So this is like all of the pre-production coming up with the idea. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's just kind of nice to look at, look at that and see the process there. So yeah, that brings me back to you and stop sharing. How long did it take for the uh, eight millimeter films to be processed and returned? Right, so I found uh, I was recommended by a colleague to contact a group in just outside of the city uh, called Negative Land, and they're uh, kind of a small operation, and it was a really quick turnaround. They develop it and give you a digital copy right away. For, That's great. Yeah, for the fun. kids to be able to see it. Yeah, it was super fun. I think that went over really well, and you know, it it adds up quickly. As Carlos probably knows, it's expensive to shoot on film. It's expensive to develop film. Chad, you know as well. But it was so fun, and like the the outcome made the video itself like so unique to have a little bit of actual film in there. And it's obviously if it's something we're just doing in the summer, it's kind of a nice. Uh, so did the kids show the results in the classroom? Right. So um, the exhibition and distribution has been mostly through the community media centers, right? We uh, the last last summer I submitted it to the yeah, the youth. Filmmaking contest and we mm -hmm. won an award, mm -hmm. uh, which was great. Um, so I'll probably do the same thing. Um, yeah, and then now it's going to be on Vermont Public. So there's kind of like, uh, yeah, I, I think it's mostly you know for them to kind of own this and say that they were part of this. I think that there's opportunities out there to to submit it. You know, if we think that the work is it turns out really well, we could submit it to festivals. We could, Good. yeah, we could do endless things with it. That's great. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna kick back over to the co-directors report. Sorry, this is a lot here. So strategic plan, um, we did meet uh, with Nathan to kind of coming out of our last board meeting um, and had a revisiting the proposal. And um, you could see that the language is a little odd here, but like filling in the blank, Nathan is uh, kind of came back with just the other day with a kind of um, an update, if you will, based on the needs that, that the three of us articulated to him. So it's much more specific. And then, so we're gonna kind of digest that and then uh, give, you the, give you the skinny on that. Um, so it's great, we're, we're on our way. 
Um, so then you can say, you can also see that we'll be preparing and kind of prepping the work that needs to happen in our circles. So be prepared. That's a, a call to action there. Um, so moving on to staff, we did hire two new camera operators um, since the last meeting, uh, Rowan and Simon, both from the Central Vermont Career Center. Thank you, Carlos. Um, so they've been great, and we hope to kind of continue to have that relationship and, you know, and have young people come in and be able to be part-time camera operators um, from CVCC. So we're having our next camera operator meeting, which is mid-November. I think we're, we did settle on 11-18. Uh, and so the topic for this one, and we'll have a whole new group of people, lots of new people that haven't met each other. And the topic is problem solving out in the field. So it's going to be a fun one. Um, technical problem solving, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so we touched on the finances, but here it is again. Do you want to say anything? Is it helpful to this is what's in the bank? Yeah, so that's just a listing of what's in the bank. Um, and I think if there's any questions, um, but I think we went over right. all these. So, so Chris and Jen and, and Zach, I think, I mean, thinking about, you know, your camera operators and which we're just seeing right now, I think it'd be great at some point uh, between you three or at least Zach and, and Chris a little bit more to kind of um, create a spreadsheet of what are the problems that camera operators and editors are having in terms of the pro products they are bringing back. Like kind of isolate those problems. What is recurring, right? So that at us as an organization can then later on when we create these workshops, right? Address those specific problems. Well, I have that. <laughs> That's <laughs> definitely exactly. Yeah. I've had that growing over the years. But. Years of, yeah. But no, that's a great idea. And it's helpful for them to see that too, right? Yeah, absolutely. But I would say, Zach, if at some point start compiling evidence, right? Like have clips, problems that you see that are just wrong, just bad, whether it be audio, video, um, white balance, whatever it is, I think to have example of what is wrong, compile it so that we can start addressing it, right? So it doesn't repeat. Because, because we would expect that camera operators after they've shot, you know, at least three or four times that those problems are resolved or at least most of those problems, hopefully. So it's just a thought, right? To, you know, I know it's more work, but it'd be useful oh, work. But no, that, I think that's, that's helpful. And, um, and also, you know, we haven't, as you guys know, uh, this is kind of a new thing that this will be our second full camera operator meeting. So hopefully we'll get, we'll kind of crowdsource some new problems that maybe ones that we haven't heard of. Um, so our statewide regional, um, this is the, the big check. The next check coming is that $25,000 that um, of state money that's being allocated to each of the um, AMOs, community media centers. And so we submitted our budget for that. Um, Pretty straightforward and we're hoping to see that in November. So it's exciting. Hopefully this keeps that that keeps rolling in and Van is continuing to advocate and request more um, for the next budget season. So what's our portion? 25,000. How many other groups are getting part of the US? 25. So well 24, sorry. 24 organizations getting 25,000 okay. each. And did the kids get credit in high school for the work that they did with this program? Oh, sorry. So no, I was asking about that, but then I had another question. Oh, sure. Yeah. Was about, did uh, high school no. give credit? No, not at the moment. No. So I mean, the only crediting uh, the only crediting programs that we've done are the CBLs through through which is the sent community community based learning. learning programs with Montpelier High School. So that's during the school year. Everything that we've done up until this point has been summer. You know, so hopefully we could extend and have. Well, I just wondered for looking ahead. Yeah, definitely. I, mean, I think that's a great a big idea. thing that is out there right now is advanced placement courses in colleges. Sure, sure. And so this is an advanced placement course in a technical resource for the whole community. So it seems like it might be they could get a credit or two, so it would appear appear on their dossier when they applied for college. Right, anyway, right. 
Yeah, just no, to I think, think about it. Yeah, and maybe that could be something I mentioned when I meet with the okay. popular high school teachers and, and Heather McLean has definitely been taking the lead on that. So she would know how difficult it is to kind of tap into that. Okay. Well, I think that's I think that's an interesting idea. That's sort of why I was uh, I connected you with uh, from what I had heard from um, Ben Matchstick about there not being programs in the middle school or high school, according to him, and there and U thirty two apparently having this really good program. And so I was wondering, you know, if if it is why do they not have them? Is it a lack of space, resources, uh, it, uh, of someone to teach it? You know, if, if the difference is, you know, for them, okay, well, they can start from scratch and they can build up a media, get a bunch of cameras, have like create some edit stations and do this sort of stuff. And then the high school is sort of starting from, from scratch and they're building up the same sort of things. You know, what I, what I was wondering talking with Ben is I was like, well, I wonder if there's a role for Orca in this, you know, uh, there's, you know, grants for this sort of uh, educational programming. And if it's, I think it's a very good question to talk with the schools and see if there's a way that, you know, maybe working with the schools since Orca is already buying cameras, already has edit stations, you know, maybe, you know, it's uh, one, one afternoon a week or one afternoon a month, uh, students could, could take part in a program there. You yeah, know, it would be beneficial to both. That's a great idea. I think maybe Carlos has like some insight in that too. I think that what I've experienced over the last year and a half work, working at with Montpelier High School is that there's this kind of, uh, I guess, like in between world of students that are interested in film and media, media art and media production, but they're not quite going over to the career center, right? And then so I think the resources, you know, which is there's been great resources put into the career centers, but then because of that, you know, video production is not there's not really any of that happening at the high school. Um, I, I think it's so to jump in here. I think more than high school, middle school, and I think right. the problem with I, the problem with high school is like all around all our districts is it's leadership. It's it's about money. It's a money's right. game. It's the money needs to go to act to other academic areas, right? So, so they're pouring money into more science-based and more math-based in other areas, and it's just a focus. Um, but I think as far as we go here in terms of access, I think more, more the middle school because high school has, you know, they send their students to either tech centers, right? And now they even have the 10th graders with pre-tech, right? But the kids that are younger than 10th graders, and ninth graders, those are the ones that don't have access to nothing. And actually the middle school teacher, Mr. Rosenberg, is building a, a, a program that has, he's been going around media programs throughout the whole state to kind of get ideas to, to cobble gear and things like that. But middle school more than that, nothing. What was the first name of Rosenberg? Correct. Well, I don't, I think it's his last name. I don't know his first name. Yeah. He's, he's making the makers pay makers space at the middle school and he's been going around the state he visited my program he visit every program in the state to kind of get ideas about technology to integrate a little bit of that in the school because the middle schools are the ones that are really suffering from right. this from not having any access and carlos you know you know jason miles at montpelier high school no no um he's is he new uh, he, I think he's been there for a while, or he's back, and, and he's hoping to purchase equipment and start something right away. So he, was he was, there when I was there. Yeah, he's been there. Okay, so and he does all kinds of like uh, extracurricular things, I think. So he's hoping to get cameras and some computers and start with some video production. So that was the latest. And then, yeah. So that really kind of brings us to the end that you can see that uh, our upcoming, like you mentioned, Sue, uh, is our Orca Media commercial, which is something that we're definitely hoping to. We had some interest from Jesse, the community producer, and I think that, you know, kind of coming out of the Hunger Mountain project, that's a great idea to kind of put Orca Media into that template and see how much time it takes to make a nonprofit video package. Yeah. Great. So thank you, everyone. Thanks for uh powering through that do you write an annual report for the program itself uh 
for the this for which sort of wraps up everything that happened from the idea that you first had to this first complete year. Do you do an annual report about this kind of a program? We haven't, you know, annual reports, I think that that's something that we're hoping to do in the future as okay. kind of like coming out of our strategic plan. I would love to have some like annual reports for Orca Media for our, the projects that we okay. that are, live under Orca Media. That's a great idea. Okay. Mr. Chair? Yeah. Yeah, what? Um, I think that <laughs> takes us to our next item, uh, board officer's election. Um, we have to accept the uh, co-director's report. I'd be happy to accept the motion. I can't make one as the chair. So moved. That's CJ, thank you. Moving okay. to accept the co-directors and Rachel, I appreciate it. Um, just following the rules here. Sorry. Uh, that one was CJ moving, Rachel seconding. Uh, all those in favor of accepting the co-director's report, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, and opposed would be a nay. Okay, that's unanimous accepting. Um, that, that would bring us to item VI, Roman numeral six board officer elections and unanimous. Great. Um, so yeah, this evening, this, this conversation has um, been previewed around the issues uh, around the treasurer and as well the secretary as I type away here. Um, and the third officer we need to um, consider is a chair. And, um, oh boy, order of operations here. Um, um, well, I typed it in this order, treasurer, secretary, chair. Um, any uh, nominations uh, for treasurer? We've reviewed in the last couple three board meetings our, our funky little dilemma here. With good foresight, we tapped an heir apparent who's kind of gone missing. So our foresight um, did not necessarily pay off. I know that there was, uh, we, this may or may not have been followed up on, or may have been one of our side conversations of the uh, the guy, the Edward Jones guy, who who was a Broadway performer. Um, <laughs> I, I I actually know this, this is probably falls into a, into a different category because um, we we had talked about reaching out. Um, in one way or another to, to him. Um, but I think we're at our maximum number of board members. Yeah, well, um, a couple things there. So Mike Doyle is looking um, to s step off. So that would create a slot. I think I also just need to say, hey, Rachel, um, R, sorry, F, um, it, if, if you don't like come to the next board meeting or even acknowledge that we're having one. Um, we're gonna have to request a resignation or I, I don't know. It's it's kind of mm -hmm. delicate. I'm not quite sure, but I think I, I need to just kind of get that uh, situation clarified with a direct mm -hmm. conversation. Um, but I do know Jin, uh, multiple outreach and also Mark who you were talking about at Edward Jones, multiple outreach, um, no luck. So, mm -hmm. um, there's that, but uh, but Jin, you let me know you did have some luck in your quest for um, treasure or interest. I don't know if that's a, enough of a lead in for you. Um, I did inquire and ask CJ if she might be interested in um, being the treasurer, and I think I've, at past meetings CJ's talked about like EC fiber and looking at financials, and so I thought maybe. It might be something that could be a good fit. 
And so I think um, if, I don't know what. Yeah, do, do we need a nomination, uh, board member? Um, the, yeah, I mean, if that would be the next, the next step. Is it something, is it something that CJ is interested in? Maybe that's that the pre-step. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we yeah. just jump into it. <laughs> <laughs> we got her on the line. Get her <laughs> elected before, before she has a chance to. Yeah, before demur. I have a chance to say anything. What, uh, Jen and I texted. And so Jen, do you want to explain my, uh, uh, my willingness to help up my suggestion about how to do it responsibly? So I think that um, it would be like an understudy role, which I think that it was kind of how Rachel and Mike Doyle, like the transition, like Rachel was going to work with Mike Doyle and be an understudy and, and get the knowledge and wisdom from Mike. And I think that's what CJ was also saying, that CJ would like to be an understudy to get that information from Mike Doyle with that transition, which I thought would be like, since that's how it was done in the past, that it would do, that would be what happens this time around too and i don't know if we need to just confirm with mike doyle but that was the um the caveat that was kind of said about taking the role with with the acknowledgement that there's an understudy portion to it mm -hmm. did i yeah. get that right cj very good well done ma'am yeah that and sounds excellent what sort of like a timeline mike what i just want to do want to say in terms of this sort of you know the handoff that didn't happen prior to this conversation mike doyle did due diligence he is he has expressed willingness to get the next person up to speed um i could mm -hmm. certainly um just let him know that it's it's um happening it's 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 happening right um but I, i've got no doubt that he's 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 willing to do that work um mm -hmm. to get um get you up to uh to speed and and meet the appropriate people um at edward jones in the bank um cj so great and just his methodology prepping for a board meeting i don't think it was terribly cumbersome but he did you know you 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 recall his um his treasurer reports um a little bit of legwork on I, I think he would do it the day of the meeting so the numbers were fresh as, as possible um so that um would be easy to facilitate yeah, um, I'll look forward to having Mike do a brain dump and, um, you know, that the part of my willingness to serve is I really believe in our mission and I like our organization. Part of my caution is that uh, Mike has investing knowledge and a perspective and viewpoint and experience that I think has been really beneficial to the organization. And I don't have the same experience and knowledge that Mike has. So I'm happy to serve, but the caveat is. Yeah, you make a good point. Historically, Mike really moved us from our um, savings being kind of in these CDs that would come due monthly. And we had like 12 rolling months of um, moving us into um, um, more a more robust portfolio I guess is the way to say it um, and I also think Mark Wynn who we spoke of earlier would be a, just a great resource because he's actually chomping at the bit a little bit to get us um, to really think about where are not just you know how much we're earning but what are you know what is what it what kind of a statement is to be putting our money this way versus that way and um, uh, you know, thinking of our money as a vote as well. So um, mm -hmm. that I really, I get a sense you have real strength in terms of the, the business business ethics side of life. Um, so if if, um, if that becomes a, a direction um, that that um, you'd be really well suited to steer us there, because Mike has done some of that previous. You know, the the move the you wouldn't have to recreate the movement he's done. He's gotten us to this place. It's just what's the new place, right? Well, there's that, and there's the fact that in 18 months we created more uh, dollars than we had done in the previous 200 years, and so we're entering a period where you know the U.S. dollar is in an extraordinary position, along with the Mexican peso, of all things globally against all other currencies last I checked. <laughs> so 
Um, part of the reason that I really felt an understudy was important is I've never seen a financial period like this. Yeah. Um, and then I don't, Rachel Muse, you were, you were perhaps had a, a nomination on the tip of your tongue. And I'll nominate CJ to serve as treasurer with uh, some training from Mike Doyle. I'll second that. And that was Dave? Yes. Thank you. Uh, further discussion or call the question? The only, the only thing I'll add is that it, nothing stops us from continuing to look for people with that investment skill set as we recruit new board members. And I think mm -hmm. we can all. Um, yeah. And I think if, if Rachel right. to, um, give up her seat on the board, then we're in a position to, to do that. Yeah, we but we don't want Rachel to do that. <laughs> I think the other Rachel might be. Rachel Feldman. Ah. We're looking at one potentially two vacancies is what I'm hearing without without naming. Yeah. Names, right. Um, OK, um, so. Uh, further conversation or all those in favor of. Aye. 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 And I, I, OK. Yeah, of, of, of our CJ being our, uh, our treasurer. I think I have to abstain properly. <laughs> all right, there will be. Well, let me call the nays and we'll hear the one. Uh, uh, all those opposed? And any abstentions? All right. Um, me. Thank you so much and congratulations, CJ. Um, aren't condolences more in order? <laughs> no, thank you very much. Um, I hope not. I think I think you're you I think Mike has uh, got us in a very good place, and um, I really look forward to serving the board and learning from Mike. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, great. Now I'm just getting it typed up. Ten seconds. Uh, great. Uh, all right. Um, I'm just uh, going down the line here. Um, the secretary position, uh, Carlos similarly has been making noises. Carlos, how long has your tenure been there in the secretary position? A, a few years, and I'm willing to take the person out for lunch and explain what I do. <laughs> okay. There's a the lunch involved. A well, I mean, is there a nominee on the tip of your tongue who has maybe tipped their hand uh, in an earlier meeting? No, not really. No, I'm just. <laughs> oh, that's right. You, I don't think you were at the meeting where um, oh. someone tipped their hand about willingness. No. I just got in. You know, I came in afterwards a few minutes. Right, I came to the, to the gathering, the yearly, but I didn't make the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, my recollection is that uh, Rachel Muse was expressing willingness in our last board meeting. Is that continue to be the case? Yes, willingness. Uh, if there's anybody else who's more enthusiastic, I, I, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not dying to do it, but, uh, but I, I, I've served on secretaries uh, for boards many times, so I'm happy to step in. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> Listen, I, yeah, I hear you. I, you know, I would do it, but I've been doing it for a few years, and I think I'm not suited for the position. I've just been doing it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if, if, if someone wants to also express willingness to be the secretary, or we could um, hear a, a, a nomination of Rachel. A nominate. All right, Chad. Chad, I second that. Can I second? <laughs> I want to second for the if record. If not, I will. <laughs> um, I don't think anything is barring our present secretary. I second that. To seconding, and well, I'm actually the one doing it. Thank you, Rachel. I owe you a uh, sandwich. Any further a discussion? I did, uh, Carlos. Any any information you can pass to me? Anything I should know? Let me know. But uh, yeah, I'm yeah. I think you know what. I think one thing, and we could talk about this later. I think the minutes should be a template online that's already online, and you have access to. That's the big okay. one, I think. Yeah. Um. Further discussion, or I can call it. Um, all those in favor of um, a 
uh, Rachel Muse being our uh, secretary, uh, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. And aye. And abstentions, I guess. Um, <laughs> all right, that's still unanimous on uh, congratulations, Rachel, and thank you. I, I was you so prior to prior to Carlos, and I, it is it's. Uh, I'm doing it right now. It's tricky. It's tricky to maintain focus and contribute meaningfully to the meaning. Correct. While, <laughs> while typing, and thanks all for bearing with me tonight. Um, a little few staggered stops um, is certain. Just warn folks. I have to step out at eight thirty. Uh, so yeah, we'll do lightning out. round. Um, so chair, I'm. I'm. Is anybody willing to serve? I. I. I remain willing, but um, I, I'm, I, yeah, this, this may be swan song, but um, does anyone uh, just? No, I'd nominate you. All right, so, I second uh, the nomination of Mike Abad. Let's let's um just expedite then if um that's the case. Um, Sue moves. CJ seconds. The discussion, or I could call a question. Uh, I just want to express my personal appreciation. Um, you warn us, you remind us, you're organized, and uh, I appreciate the work and the, the effort. Yeah, thank you, thank you, CJ. It's um, the organization means a lot to me, so um, I'm I'm glad to. I, I second glad that. To, glad to help keep it all glued together. Um. All, all those uh, in favor of me maintaining the chair, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed. Okay, thank you. Um, whoo, we're moving. Wish I, yeah, let's see if we could tuck this in in 10 minutes. Old business. Um, I'll just quickly say I was gonna get a whole, I was, I was, I wanted to respond to Carl, the sports guy. Um, we, I missed it. It was the August meeting. I've somehow remembered. I asked Jen to get contact information and I was going to summarize our conversation from that board meeting, but, um, it was very clear that we kind of left it at the conversation will continue in terms of maintaining a relationship with him to cover high school sports. Um, and I just felt like, okay, I was going to, I actually, this week I was going to write him that you know, here's, here's what we think. But I realized I don't actually know staff if, since it was August, has the conversation continued? Is there an update? Um, I felt really like I don't want to write a canned thing that might actually not match what he may already know if you guys have continued the conversation as it was left in that uh, public comment. I believe, Chris, you read the letters. Everyone kind of clicking on what, what I'm talking about here. The Carl Parr, what's the last name? Do you want to speak to that at all? So I think he reached out and offered um, the soccer game. He's being sponsored already, and he offered us an archive version for $150 per game. And I said that our, I think we had been having discussions about what criteria do we, at, do we use to determine what content we pay for. And I think currently we were saying right now we're not paying for any content. And because there aren't any rules and criteria around it. And that's where the sports coverage would kind of fall into where we're paying for content. And so I think right now we just are holding off until some criteria, whether we decide at some point that we will pay for content and but what will that content be? And so that might be a discussion to have in within the mm -hmm. policy circles about what are these rules? And I think that in terms of Reach, and we still need to reach out to the schools themselves to see what sports casting they've got going on currently at their schools and seeing if there's somehow we can either offer resources to support that and maybe get the content as a result of that rather than having to pay a, a consultant or a third party to record these and give us the footage. So and that, if, you let, if you let Carl know that. All. Yeah, so I did respond to him and say, you know, we still are currently not paying for content. We're looking at having the conversation about what's the criteria. And as soon as we have anything, we'll let them, we'll let him know, is what I responded when he offered the $150 for the games. 
So is that so? So you are. you just basically said we're on pause criteria for forthcoming. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it would, I don't know if it's ready to be put on the agenda. It's something to have a conversation in the policy circle to yeah. see if it's at a point that once it's kind of like discussed and then at that point, we would probably put it on the agenda. But right now I would say it's moved into the policy circle for discussion. Got it. Thank you. Um, other old business? Okay, is that right? Um, so the, we're moving into the policy. So, and, and then I guess uh, it sounds like new business, if old business is exhausted itself. Um, so Hearing none on no business, old business, new business, no new business. That's what I meant to say. Um, I have a new business. Go ahead. Is that Dave? Yeah. You got the floor. I um, myself have looked at the circles and I saw that I was in outreach. Yeah. Um, someone had come to me with a a question or a challenge. And I said that I'm not part of anything like an employee assistance program or anything else. But uh, that in some organizations that I've been in, there are indeed some kind of personnel policies by which someone who either wants something new or something old restored can go through a book and know what, their, uh, what the process is. I've never received anything like that since I've been, been on this board. So even though I'm part of outreach, I also, there's a hole that I have about how decisions are made around personnel issues. When I was the director of the Moyle Family Center for the first time, because the uh, director had gone to Europe to see the different programs, uh, she came back in about six months and came into my office and said, how did it go? And my answer was, well, Personnel, personnel, personnel. In other words, that's what the six months had been. Uh, and sometimes they're wonderful things, sometimes they're controversial things, and sometimes they're things that need help being arbitrated or uh, some kind of conflict resolution thing. So I'd like to, at some point on one of these meetings, have us talk over what are our existing personnel policies. And that's uh, my request for new business. Um, and did I get you right that you see that as a circle conversation at first or? A, a oh, I, I think I was looking to see what assignments I had. Gotcha. If someone approaches me on the board because they think that I might be able to help them straighten out something. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not the person that straightens things out. You know, I have other things that I do. Um, and so I, I want to know though who I can, who or how I can actually ask the person to seek redress if it's a grievance or clarification if it's fuzzy or a conflict resolution if it seems to be a disagreement. Can I speak to that? Makes a lot of sense, go ahead, Chris. Um, so we do have, I think that's a great area of something that we've been putting a lot of energy into since we've, um, you know- The tripartite. Yeah, yeah, since we've taken our-, yeah. our I, I also have done, a, it's been a huge time, time suck. I'm glad it was the summer as a teacher, I could actually devote what it needed, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's lingering. We now have a, a grievance uh, uh, form and policy yeah we have a way for uh, someone to say hey this happened um and i'd like it looked into and um we're kind of test driving uh one issue on this policy and it's working but we just haven't had the final meeting and uh that's that's that was part of my reluctance to remain chair frankly um it's a it, it big 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 time spent. Right, and I, well, that's what I was going to say is that we do have this the grievance uh, procedure in place now, and any staff can can enter that and, and uh, you know file a complaint and, and then enter that process. And we also have the employee handbook, you know, and we have the um, I would say that that 
that's all of the things that we also need to look at in our strategic planning uh, when we look at policy. Great. And I think the, the policies and procedures and employee handbook fall into that policy circle. So when we first discussed the policy, one of the things was redo the policies and procedures because I think they're from 2013. Right. And it's definitely something that, you know, we, I think some, there was a conversation about, do we have a social media policy? Because one of the chem operators wanted to know what could they put on their tw Twitter account. And sure, it's like, yeah. you know, so these definitely, this conversation has been coming around and it's like, we've seen where there is gaps and, you know, as we try to clean that up and that's where the policy circle hopefully will be primarily working on is trying to get this, this cleaned up. And so that there is a clear handbook that we can give to all the new employees and say, this is, you know, this is what it means to be an orca media camera operator. This is, and then, and then the next step would be the community producers. You know, this is, we had the statement of compliance and the access form, but it, that also needs to be probably looked at also because it hasn't been revised since probably around 2013. Do we have, well, I think, oh, yes, go ahead. Go was, ahead. That there was a, remember in the past also, we brought up what Steve Whitaker wanted, which was um, he wanted the raw intact footage, the stuff that's being recorded before meetings starts and after meetings end and that stuff. We haven't, have we defined that? Is, is that, that, that is not, that shouldn't exist, right? That should be erased or deleted. Right, everything is gavel to gavel in terms of meetings, and anything that's beyond that is not considered ours, and we should not deal with it. Carlos, I remember, I remember Rob building that kind of language and running it past me, and maybe a bat, one back and forth on it. I just don't know where it exists, but okay. I do, I do, I do feel confident that particular item was um, addressed with that same outcome you spoke. Absolutely. And I think that needs to be brought back and put into the conversation and we should have regulations about what are we going to do with things like that? Because a camera operator can take things that are being recorded beforehand and taken out of context, right? And after, and, and, and legally they shouldn't be able to do that. Or us for that matter. I don't know if that would fall in the in Zach's circle, in the tech circle. I'm not sure. But I, I do know Rob built some language to clarify. And oh, I was going to say, so I do like in on his con or his files that he left, there is an, a letter because it went through the attorney and they wrote not quite a position paper, but they wrote their recommendation. So we do have that. And that would be something to incorporate into the policies and procedures so that if any of the municipal people wanted to know what does it mean that you come to our meetings and record it, that we don't fall into, we're not responsible for maintaining their footage for their open records or their open meeting law records policy. So that's where it would also be hand, handy to be able to give to them and say, you know, we record it and we're happy to give you the branded footage, but we generally like the raw footage isn't something that we put up on the internet or if they wanted to come and say, you know, I want to look at all the raw footage, we're happy to show it to you. But because we do stitch it together, it's not really easy for us to be like, okay, these are all the clips for that meeting. Do we or Van have a legal uh, advisor that uh, we can ask legal questions to? We are. They all kind of use the same lawyer. Our lawyer is the lawyer that all the community media centers have used for the last 10 plus years. So that person is available to look over whatever we came up with in terms of personnel policies. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. Um, one thing for the, for the triumvirate here um, is uh, do you have some kind of plan about if there's backup or if one of you gets sick or mm -hmm. something like that? Yeah, we typically, if, if one of us is going to be away, we'll create like an away plan document that just a substitute, make, yeah, substitute teacher plan. Well, yeah, just to make sure that we our bases are covered. And yeah, mm -hmm. that usually has more to do with like, you know, content management, production management, community engagement stuff. So it's like, I think that that is specific to like daily operations, mm -hmm. but yeah. But if, if one of us were to like die or something, 
Um, well, you know, somebody gets long COVID. Or right. Somebody yeah, yeah. gets something, or somebody just gets overwhelmed. Because right. I think you're doing more than ever. And, you know, I don't know about <laughs> your, your case, if you're comfortable with it. You know, now you are, but over the long term, mm -hmm. sure. would you, you know, still. We're also um, breaking new ground. Right. Because yeah, in yeah. the days when there was a director, the director had to decide when, in this case, he had the authority to make a decision re regarding a personnel question or whether it was something that needed to be processed by the entire working staff or whether it was something that needed to be brought to the board. Mm -hmm. and, and now we have three people. Any one of them you know, might answer the question slightly differently. And I don't think we've ever had anything like a breakdown of what is the vote is two to one among the tripartite directorship. Oh, what if somebody's away? Can the two people make a two zero decision without hearing from that person? I mean, I just don't know if we've got it down on paper. I've never seen it. Yeah, and I think I think part of that is our circles aren't up and running yet. And you guys are sort of doing a stay tuned thing. Could you timeline us a little bit, like launching of the circles? What to expect? You could give us a little hint there. I know there was a a line so about oh, stay tuned. I think that we were preparing. For the strategic plan, I think once we've got the Nathan Souter strategic plan, we're going to digest it, see what parts that we can take to the individual circles. And I think that we were aiming for every other, like, so the fallow month is where we would maybe reach out to the circles and meet up with them and say, these are the projects that we're working on and that maybe we would like to have your input and, and get um, views. And so we're hoping that the month of November would be like we would be reaching out saying these are the projects that we're working on. These are whether these projects fit into strategic plan. These are the strategic plan ideas that we're coming back to the group with. So we're hoping that that's where the be prepared was that in November you should be people you should be reached out to by one of us about the circles and doing some circle work and what and that may be also kind of figuring out like what availability everyone has to be able to the, if it's like okay that's too much time and then so i think that's where we're hoping is in november that initial conversation and figuring out how much you want to meet within the circle thank you that's that's helpful um that also actually leads me i was looking at it so our next full board meeting last one of the year is december Fourth Tuesday, of course, is the 27th, and I'm going to propose we kick it uh, to the third Tuesday, the 20th. How do people like that? I think the 27th is probably untenable. I think so. Not that the 20th is that much better. Well, I know. We want to do the second one. Do we want to say the 13th? Yeah. Is that wiser? Uh, 20th would be okay. So 6.30 on the 20th? Um, yeah, I just, I, I, I knew we had to bump it up e at least a week is perhaps too wiser, but um, just taking the pulse here. The problem with the pulse is that a lot of, there's a lot of whatever in, in the holidays this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I don't have anything yet, but that doesn't mean that I may not have a conflict. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And we've had a good run of at least, you know, getting our five, getting our six. So um, it's been a while since we've had a full, full, full attendance, but um, I think we've just, I think the new year will have a little more clarity. Um, so I'll, 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 I'll say we're uh, the 20th people uh, can live with. I think the 13th, for, I mean, for me, I could talk on my behalf, the 13th is better and easier for me because I'm still coming off of school. So that's the way I feel, which would be the second week, right? But either is fine with me. I'm good either way. Okay. Um, Carlos, you may tip the scale. <laughs> people, people okay with the 13th? Take the 13th over the 20th if I could. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I think I leaned slightly to the 13 too. So let's let's call it second Tuesday. And then it sounds like um the initial outreach uh, on the circles will be in November, but it may not necessarily be like, you know, hitting the ground running, but here's, here's kind of what we're shaping out. And then maybe, uh, yeah, maybe the new year is the true launch, but that makes sense for you to, for staff to give the circle participants in November, a, a sense of the hot button, uh, the top of the list priority issues that uh, we, we, you know, batted about a bit this meeting and in previous ones so that sounds great yay um okay i'm gonna accept a motion to adjourn at 8 38 whoever wants to take the honors or, or is there new more new business i gotta do a claim last call new business all right um motion to adjourn anyone want to grab that at 8 39 now motion to adjourn that's Chad, and then a second. A second. And a Carlos. And all those in favor of calling this meeting over at 8.39, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed. All right, aye. that is a unanimous pulling of the plug here. Um, thanks everybody, that was another full meeting. I